Do you think that he should want out of Dallas? <laughs> I'm sure that his actual representative would be upset and is not going to let me get that 3%, but I'll take it if they're giving up. Um, yes, he should want out of Dallas. <laughs> but the real question to me is, can he get out of Dallas? And originally when I saw Marcus say this, I was like, uh, yeah, it's just us TV people just talking, making something to talk about because it seems so unrealistic because we see it happen so rarely, the forced trade in the NFL. But they made the mistake of franchising him for this season, and I think that actually puts Dak in a stronger position and Dak can walk up to them and say, like, you need to move me and get something, or after this season, I'm leaving. And he can pull an NBA-style uh, move. And honestly, I don't know if we'll get to this at some point. I don't know that that's a terrible idea for Dak Pres I mean, for the Cowboys. It's a great idea for Dak Prescott if he ends up in Marcus Spears, I think, suggested that he went to the 49ers. Any quarterback that can end up within the, the sphere of influence of Kyle Shanahan, yes, do that if you can. <laughs> Shafty. Well, think about all the teams that could use a player like Dak Prescott, not only in terms of talent, but in terms of leadership and the cultural change that he would bring. Washington. How much would Washington pay to cripple its division rival and take its quarterback and trot out Dak Prescott? How about Chicago? How about Indianapolis? How about Tampa Bay as a successor to Tom Brady? How about New Orleans? as a successor to Drew Brees. How about San Francisco? How about any one of these teams? And so the fact that there are so many options tells you that Dak Prescott has got an enormous amount of leverage because he can do that. He can say, okay, I'm not going to resign here after a year, so you might as well move on from me. There are a lot of different ways they, that he could play this out, that the Cowboys could play this out. By the way, during a pandemic, if the cap is going down, can they afford to franchise Dak Prescott to the tune of 37 Point eight million, thirty-eight million dollars, or whatever it may be. This right now shapes up to me as the most fascinating storyline of the NFL offseason this offseason. Every year there's something that jumps out. Last year was Tom Brady. Right now, it looks like it could be Dak Prescott, even though he hasn't played in a while due to that injury. I love that. And, and so, Lewis, I've been waiting all week to ask you this, because I've, I've been sort of beating this drum a little bit on radio, and, and team building is your thing. Dak Prescott is a great player for all the reasons that we have just described. The Dallas Cowboys, however, feel to me like they are in a place where they might seriously consider just blowing the whole thing up because they have all these bad contracts, they, they have um, money spent in all the wrong places, and they may need to sort of hit the reset button. And the best way to do that might be to try and reenact the legendary Herschel Walker trade by trading Dak Prescott and starting over again. If you were in a position where you're kind of running that team and making those decisions, do you think that's something they should seriously be considering? I, I, you know what? It, it may cross my mind. The only problem is Dak Prescott is coming off of injury, and I just don't know how other teams are going to view him long term in terms of minimizing risk, you know, down the road, considering the kind of injury that he's coming off of. Look, if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, this is what I'm thinking about. Look, first of all, I'm trying to figure out in a down cap year. Can I afford to one either franchise Dak or two? Is there enough money out there for me? Rather, is there a number out there for me that Dak would be satisfied with to say, okay, look, we need to go ahead and lock you up, make sure that we can absorb your cap hits over the next you know, two to three years in particular so we can then go ahead and get to work on evaluating the rest of what we've got going on down here, which quite honestly is a mess, consider especially on the defensive side of the ball. I would try to get Dak Prescott, you know, under the, you know, you know, under contract right away so I could kind of address everything else that's going on, particularly this. Look, on the defensive side, they better figure out whether or not it's a personnel issue or if it's a coaching issue with Mike Nolan heading up this defense because it's historically kind of gross when you watch how they're playing. <laughs> and you saw how they played just the other night against the Baltimore Ravens. It, that, that's just not acceptable. And that's just not a personnel issue. That is an overall schematic issue. That, that's, just, that's, just, that's just bad business right there. they got to figure out what's going on there. And I love Mike McCarthy on the offensive side of the ball. I've known Mike for a long time, dating back to my days at the University of Pittsburgh when he was there figure out whether or not he is bringing the kind of innovation along with Kellen Moore to this offense that they were kind of thinking that they were going to get. So I would make sure that Dak is in the fold. We know that without him, this football team is markedly different on the field and off the field. I would get that taken care of, and I would quickly turn my attention to the rest of the mess that I have, that I have created, because that's where I think the bigger problem is, where they have made some serious, serious miscalculations.
And, and if you spin it all the way back to the beginning, the first mistake they made, Nick, and I feel like we have been talking about this for two years, was not taking care of the quarterback first. Mike Tannenbaum, to his credit, said that two years ago. It's, they're starting at the end with all the other people they brought in, and they left this one, and Nick, very quickly, that I think ultimately is going to prove yeah. to be their undoing. I think that is the problem, and if I were the GM for the Dallas Cowboys, I would try to sign up Dak. I would not entertain the idea of trading him. But the reason why I think this story is interesting because they have a unique GM structure. I would be concerned about locking in Dak because I knew my, my um, future would be tied to how well we do immediately. But when you are, your GM is also the team owner, you have potentially, maybe not in his case because of his age, but you have potentially a longer runway, and you can consider blowing it all up in a way that might be beneficial that a normal GM wouldn't be, um, wouldn't be incentivized to necessarily do. Shefty, quick final thought. But the longer this goes on, the longer it has gone on, the more leverage shifts to Dak Prescott because the closer he gets to true free agency and the more he could exert his wishes and his desires, whatever they are, over the Dallas Cowboys. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.